Uh, because uh, in a funny way, you know, in faculties where women dominate, uh, those, I mean, those prof in professions where women dominate, which is a result of the supply of those uh, who study those courses, uh, they tend not to be as valued, they tend to pay less. And also, it denies men an, an opportunity also to provide service in those areas. Take, for instance, uh, nursing, uh, uh, social workers. Uh, and yet we know that in those areas there's a, a critical role for, for, for men uh, to play. So it's also an, enabling more men to be part of those subjects and to make their own contribution um, in those fields. And also the issue of ending violence on campus, clearly something that should be taken very seriously. It is big, yeah. And Administrators had... have to do something about it. And, and so far, um, as you were saying, you have a few universities committed to ending violence on campus. Shouldn't this be a no-brainer? Why aren't we seeing more universities committing to this? It, it is a big problem. Most universities are ill-prepared uh, to prevent, uh, but even more disturbing, when a case has been put in front of them, uh, the response is generally very inadequate. Uh, so we are trying to work through these universities that we are collaborating with to create minimum standards of what should and need to exist in a university so that uh, uh, for universities who may say we don't even know where to start, we could actually provide some kind of a toolkit. Universities generally have more or less similar structures anywhere in the world. So it should be possible to, to develop some kind of generic standards so that universities can learn from each other, test these interventions and see if it actually leads to decrease of incidences of violence against women on campus. Now, this group of universities, it's, it's 10 universities committing, definitely a start. Um, mm. What do you think it will take for other universities to follow suit? And, and why focus on these particular universities? Well, thank, thank God for, for, so for social media, for technology these days, that even though we're just uh, starting with 10 universities, we would like to be broadcasting and reaching out to all universities in the world. Uh, we are working with UNESCO, and as you know, UNESCO's mandate within the, the UN is to deal with uh, uh, education, including institutions. So they are going to be assisting us to get this message across so that uh, uh, we get many universities that are going to be self-starters. Our own offices in different parts of the world will be reaching out to the universities so that we can increase the numbers of the universities that are doing this at, 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 at a country level. Um, we are hoping that uh, the, the, the universities will also share the negative lessons and the challenges that uh, they, they would face along the way. You mentioned the role of administration and closing the gender gap there. How could that benefit students and perhaps universities as a whole? Uh, well, to the extent that you provide diversity in the in the understanding of the, of the subject uh, uh, meta, the interpretation, uh, I think that we, we do believe that uh, women who are uh, trained will bring their own perspective, but also the fact that women get stuck in junior and lower positions and they are unable to therefore rise. So no matter how good they are, no matter how much they can assist the university to excel, because of their gender, they are overlooked and they never progress above a certain level. And in some cases, they end up leaving the academia. So you end up then sustaining this skewed profile of who uh, provides knowledge at university level. Students, especially women students, need role models as well. So the increase of faculty, of people who look like them, uh, also enhances the uptake of specific subjects by women students. As we explore closing the gender gap in academia, besides STEM, as we look at some of these gendered subjects that students are studying, how do you see that changing in the future? Well, I think that it's, it's, it's problematic that gender studies uh, are more or less, in many cases, like 90 percent uh, female students. Um, one of the changes, at the very least, that we would like to see is the change of the composition of these classes. Also, 
uh, subject matter has to include the role responsibility of both men and women uh, so that uh, we do not we go beyond uh, making women conscious about their place in society and supporting them to be able to take that place that is important but we also need to also help men to buy in uh, uh, in being part of a gender equal society and understanding what it is that they need to do what should be men be doing diff that is different from what women are expected to do and uh, when we do this at university, it is already a bit late, uh, as you can imagine. We should be doing this much earlier and at a, at a, a preschool level even and at primary school level. So part of what we are eyeing is to make a, a gender equality uh, to be available not just to the students that want to specialize, but for instance, students who are teachers. This is something they need to understand and have, have, have a mechanism to use in their teaching experience so that when they go, go to work and they stand in front of the classroom, they are already ready to contribute towards a gender equal rate by the manner in which they deal with their students, teach both girls and treat both. Both, both girls and boys in a similar way and enhance and encourage equality between them.